you know, a lot of challenges in the beginning is figuring out you've got this amazingly vast, highly respected, you know, highly followed, very well read um, property. How do you bring that to a game and do it justice? There are so many different things within the books that were clearly had to be a certain way. There was so much, <laughs> so much strife about whether we were going to do Tom Bombadil at all and the conversation about, well, Tom Bombadil wasn't in the movies and there's a reason why it was cut. We, we had a very strong belief on what we thought was going to make this story great. It's such a long road to get to where we are today, and there are so many different things that I can look at now and say, that was definitely the right decision. And Tom Bombadil was definitely the right decision. So at launch, it was, you know, we had eight regions. We kind of worked our way through the Shire. We ended up in Angmar. You know, it was a, we thought, huge world at the time. In fact, I think at the time it was one of the largest pieces of landscape ever released for a game. And eyes and ears and, and hearts and minds and everything opened up to us to see how we addressed, you know, how do you do a story in this world? You know, we, we can't be Frodo, right? I mean, these are the things that people thought the game was going to be, that I could be Frodo and I'm going to run through Middle Earth. You know, we had to get, get them to understand what our take was, that we were allowing you to tell your own story within Tolkien's story. Our goal was this has to look unlike any place that anybody's ever been in an MMO, right? And hopefully also in an RPG, because when you read about Moria, it's this big, huge, giant, expansive, cavernous place. The idea was to use, uh, to make it a landscape space with not one, but two separate height maps. So there'd be a height map for the floor and then a height map for the ceiling. That was something we'd never done before, doing the, uh, the, 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 the vast landscape-y uh, interior dungeon. It's really hard without a day file and without having sky and clouds and sun and all the colors that brings in. And you could have two stretches that have the same grass pattern, the same little huts, and you swap out sunny blue sky for crazy red, green, shimmery, thing evil it, thing. Yeah. And it totally changes the look and feel. Not having that in Moria it was, was much challenging. more challenging. Yeah. Our primary goal was to, how do we take this amazing game that people love once they get in it, but that there are some basic barriers to entry, like the subscription-only experience, and how do we reinvent what we have so that it retains all of its, you know, grand and glorious nature while addressing an audience that's much bigger. We are standing on a mound of content that is you know, almost 10 years old, going back to when we first started early development of the turbine. I think it's, it's a credit to the early architects of the game that we're able to you know, continue to add on to it and, and, and grow it and do um, uh, remarkable things. Coming into Rohan, we have a totally new space. We have a totally new way of playing across it. Uh, and I think that being able to go out on these vast plains uh, and ride your war steed and challenge these, you know, Mount of Bands of Marauders, I think we've come to a whole new chapter in Middle Earth. This is where the War of the Ring begins. At a high level, you know, sort of, the training wheels are coming off, we're out of Eriador, we're you know, east of the Misty Mountains, into the very epic, action-oriented portion of the fiction. And being able to tell that story is, is extremely exciting. Lotus has grown and gotten stronger over the years. Uh, which is a huge testament to this game and to this team. You know, the team has grown, the game has grown. We're not slowing down, anything. we're speeding up. It's going to be a fantastic 2012.